Welcome to the course orientation video for our biological evolution course, Summer 1, 2021. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I'm happy it looks like the pandemic is end is in sight. Uh, we still do have a little bit of online work um, courses. This course will be entirely online. In addition, because it's a summer course, it is much more condensed. It's about three times as condensed as a regular fall or winter class. So just be aware of that. If you've taken a class before in one of the summer terms, you know what to expect. Uh, but if not, just be prepared. It is a lot of daily work. Uh, you have class every weekday. There's going to be a lot of stuff to do. You need to keep up. If you fall behind, even if you miss one day, it's going to start to impact your grade really, really quickly, much more so than it would in the fall semester. Okay, so please keep that in mind. I try to keep the course as simple as possible so you know exactly what to do, what is due, when, and lots of help online. I'll be online Monday through Thursday and also by appointment. Um, you can log on to Zoom. You can send me an email. Please reach out. I love talking about evolution. I'm happy to answer questions, go over anything. If an issue comes up, address it as soon as you can. If you're coming to me and saying, hey, last week this happened, there's nothing I can do to help you. But if you come to me and say, oh, I had an emergency yesterday, or send me an email even better the day of, often we can make accommodations. So please, please notify me as soon as possible and do not delay. Okay? There's really no excuse. We live in an era where your phones are right by you. You know, Unless you're unconscious or you know, seriously <laughs> incapacitated, you can send me a quick text. Uh, not a text. I'm not going to give you my phone number uh, for texting. But you can send me a quick email, right? So get on your phone, shoot me an email, let me know, and we can often make arrangements. When you log on to Blackboard, you will see this as your main page. So click on the course orientation video. Well, you've already done that if you're listening to this. That's the first thing you should do. All of the material you need is in this first section here. We'll start with the syllabus and calendar. I'll look at those briefly, and then I'll go through the remaining uh, content areas. So our syllabus, you've got a Word document here. Let's go over it very quickly. You can download that. If you want a hard copy, print one up. Otherwise, just use the digital version. Okay. So I'm, I've got an office on campus. I'm there about every day, but not um, as frequently as before the pandemic. I also have a lab that's down the hallway that is listed outside of my office. But most likely, you won't be on campus either. Um, our textbook is third edition of Evolution, Zimmer, and Emlin. You can get it for about 20 bucks if you want to send it back after the end of the semester. That's pretty reasonable. I always have students ask, do I need the textbook? The short answer is not absolutely, but it is of great help. There are nearly daily reading assignments. Not quite every day, but many, um, most days you'll have a reading assignment from the textbook. I highly suggest that you get access to the textbook. You can buy an ebook version for you know, a little bit more if you just want to have a digital one on hand, or you can rent the hard copy. If you have an older version of the Zimmer and M1, that actually works okay too, but you might have to be careful about the chapter numbers and, and look at the um, material that we're going over. Make sure you're reading the correct chapter rather than just looking at the chapter number. Okay. My suggestion, don't read that in a ton of detail. Don't spend a ton of time on it. but skim over it depending on how quickly you read and how much you like textbooks you might spend a little bit of time with it before you watch the lectures then you can use it as a resource to go back in and answer questions to review stuff later everything that is on the exam everything that is on quizzes will be something that will be presented in class or rather on blackboard through the videos through um, your other reading assignments there will be some reading assignments outside of the textbook so you, ab you don't need the textbook to get all of the material, but it is a great, great help. Okay? So that's my answer if you talk to me and ask me about, you know, do I need the textbook? Okay? So course objectives are listed here. Uh, Evolution is an interesting course. It's kind of stuck between an upper division and an introductory course. There's a lot of very uh, broad material. We do a lot of different things. Evolution is one of the foundational things for all of biology but some of it is a little bit more advanced. Okay? Now, there are four components of the course upon which you will be evaluated. The most important are the exams. We have four units, and each of them has a midterm or a unit exam, maybe is a better term. So you could really uh, replace that with the term unit exam. 
but they will be all administered through Blackboard. It's a completely online asynchronous course this semester. Now what that means is because they are on Blackboard, there are two options I have. I can either use, um, oh, I forget what it is, the software that makes you lock down your browser and can't look away from your screen. It's kind of these very draconian measures to try and prevent cheating. I don't think those will actually work all that great. There's still ways to get around those and, and cheat. So here's how it works. Just like the quizzes, your exams are completely open book. You can use your book, you can use your notes, you can look up websites. I, that's just the nature of, of online courses, unfortunately. Now, to get around that a little bit, to make it still so you do need to learn the material, you can't just go in and without, you know, uh, studying anything, hopefully you wouldn't have done that anyway because you'd be missing points if you're not keeping up with the material. But if you go in cold for an exam, you're going to have a lot of trouble. There are 50 questions. You have ample time, an hour and a half for 50 questions, really a lot of time. And here is the one kind of, well, there are two actually, but the first uh, condition to limit, prevent, you know, people from not doing their own work. Hopefully you're still doing your own work. You know, if you're using your notes, you're using the book, you're accessing on the internet, that's still your own work in this case, okay? But you cannot backtrack on questions. So each question will pre be presented individually You'll answer it as much time as you need, um, and then you'll go on to the next uh, question. And if all those questions together need to take up less than 90 minutes, okay? So that means that you, if you're going cold, you're going to have problems, okay? So please, and, and if you're keeping up with all the material, if you're doing the quizzes, if you're doing the worksheet material, all that, you really will have a lot of that prepared for the exam. I have one other major way for it to help you prepare and, and outline for the exam. Those are called the SLOs and we'll look at them in a little bit. Now my other main kind of strategy to make sure that most of what's on the exams is your own work is that there are pools of questions. So you can't sit and watch your friend if they're in the course also take the test and then you take the test and just copy all their answers because you're going to get many of the questions. Some may be the same but most of your questions will be different because we're pulling from pulling from pools of questions, okay? So it'll be the same overall level of hardness on average for everyone, but not everyone gets the exact same test, okay? The dates are specified. We'll look at the calendar in a little bit. They're four spread pretty evenly throughout the semester. There will also be a final exam. All five of the exams, the four midterms and the final are all required. I do not drop a, a, an exam. So you need to make sure that you look at those exams Make time on each of those days to make sure that you take that exam. You can take it any time from, you know, 12 a.m. on the night. Well, as soon as it turns, you know, 1.001 oh, 1, .001 a.m. on the day of the exam is listed all the way until 11.59 on the day it's listed. You can start that exam as long as you start it within that time period and finish it within 90 minutes you'll uh, have potential for full credit, okay? So I'll look at the calendar here in a little bit. The final exam is comprehensive. It's equally pulled from all four of those units. However, and this is a little bit, although it is comprehensive, the one um, thing that I do to make it a little bit easier is I use the same pools of questions. And so probably around 50% of the questions on the final exam will be the exact same question that you had on the previous exam. The other one will be a new question pulled from those same pools. Okay, So that helps a bit and allows you to bump up your grade a little bit on the, on the final exam if you've kept up and studied. But it's still going to be a little bit challenging. It's composed of all the material over the entire course of the semester. Okay, The final exam is on Tuesday, July 6th, all day, online. Same as the other one. There will be more questions, so typically about 80 questions, um, 20 questions drawn from each of the previous four exams, okay? All the exams are counted and weighted equally and will be averaged to get your exam score for the course, okay? Now, the next section of the course upon which you'll be evaluated are quizzes. There will be two each week, typically Tuesday and Friday. However, based on exam schedule, sometimes it will be Tuesday and Thursday or a slight variation. They're all listed in the calendar. That won't change unless, none of the dates in the calendar will change unless there's a major university closure or hurricane or you know, electrical outage like we have had some in the past and we'll make adjustments if and when those come up. 
but otherwise you are responsible for all the dates on the calendar, okay? I also remind you in the daily links folder and often through announcements, so often you'll get multiple reminders about due dates, but you are held for all of the due dates on the calendar, okay? So look at those, we'll look at them here in a little bit for the quizzes, okay? Each quiz covers all of the material since the last quiz or exam, and then there's also a little bit of a guide for, for which units each quiz will cover uh, when they're announced, okay? Quizzes are the same format as um, exams, except you can backtrack. All the questions will be presented um, one at a time, but then you can go back for quizzes if you want and change your answer before you do your final submit. Um, the first quiz, you can take it as many times as you want. However, after that, so quiz two through, I think there are 10 or something, uh, two each week. So quiz two through 10, you'll only be able to take one time, but they're online, open notes, open book. You'll have ample time, 30 minutes for five questions. So lots and lots of times for each of those quizzes, okay? At the end of the semester, I'll drop your lowest quiz score. So if you just forget one, no big deal, won't impact your grade, or if you just get a bad score on one, um, I'll only use all of your other higher scores. So the lowest quiz score is dropped before I calculate your quiz average. Third component of the course will be worksheets. Worksheets are a little bit higher level of difficulty. However, I provide a guide video on YouTube. Well, there'll be a link on each of the worksheet assignments that gives you a really, really good, almost step-by-step -step, uh, how to do it. Not the exact answers. I'll, do, in many cases, do similar questions with different numbers or a slightly different uh, background, but the same exact concept. In addition, if you're ever having trouble on the worksheets, you may log into one of my Zoom office hours, Monday through Thursday, 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. I do also make appointments, but if you're trying to do the worksheet the last day, the day it's due, it's very light, unlikely you'll be able to get an appointment, so plan ahead. But if the guide videos aren't giving you the answers or you're not 100% sure, make an appointment log on to a Zoom office hour. I'm happy to go over with them and actually just walk you through it and give you the answers. So there's every reason you can get really close to or full credit on each of the worksheets. However, if you turn them in late, there's gonna be some serious deductions. So 25% for each day late. So if you turn it in three days late, you can get as, most, as much as 25% credit. But if they're four days late, you're not gonna get anything, okay? Um, again, weekly reading assignments, almost daily really, from the uh, textbook. But in addition to that, the fourth um, component upon which you will be evaluated for this course are what I call reading questions. These are almost daily, not quite. There are 18 of them spread throughout the semester, so it's really not daily. There are a lot of them at the beginning of the semester. And these are basically almost like attendance, quote unquote, attendance points. You know, because it's an asynchronous course, I'm not seeing when you're online or how much time you're spending online. That's gonna vary from student to student. These are, if you do them, as long as you put a reasonable effort for, forth, they'll be short, very short sentence or two, um, open-ended uh, questions. If you answer them, if you attempt to do them reasonably, you'll get full credit for them. Now, it might be to your advantage to put a little bit of effort just to make sure you've got the right answer. You can even check with me at, during office hours or make an appointment or send me an email. Um, because uh, on the exams, oftentimes I will put the exact same question that are on your reading question. So if you answered it, if you understood it and answered it on the reading questions, you get full credit for it there and then a multiple choice version of it might appear on the exam or a true false version of it or something. So it's to your credit, to your benefit, to spend a little bit of time, make sure you understand them and answer them. They will be pulled from the reading assignments. The reading assignments vary. You don't need to spend a ton of time on them. Some of them are um, uh, scientific literature, but nothing too hardcore. Um, others are, for instance, we have a geological time um, uh, chart. I don't expect you to memorize it or even spend time because you can refer to it, uh, just open it up and use it for the exam, but you'll be answering questions about it. So varying reading quote-unquote assignments. One's from National Geographic about birds and dinosaurs. So anyway, it's a lot of fun. Okay. Now, at the end of the semester, I will average each of these sections and then weight them appropriately. So exams will be 60% of your overall grade. So you can kind of think of it like 60 points possible for exams. If you had 100 on all five of your exams, an average of 100, you would get all 60 percentage points. 
And so obviously, if you do poorly on exams, that's going to have a bigger impact than quizzes or worksheets or reading questions. But remember, reading questions, you pretty much get all of those as long as you turn them in on time. Worksheets, if you, uh, you know, go through the guide videos, ask me if you have any questions, you get all of those points for worksheets. So really, in quizzes, again, they're open notes, open book, lots and lots of time. So really, this 40% of the course, if you put in the time and the effort, you can get nearly all of that. Every student can get nearly all of those 40 percentage points. And so exams are going to be an important part also, but there is a, a high weight of this course towards effort. At the end of the semester, based on those weightings, I will average all of your um, points together, drop the lowest quiz, drop the lowest reading question. If you have a reading question, you miss, right? That's either a 100% or a 0%. But if you miss one reading question, I will drop it, okay? Um, I don't even know if that's in here. Maybe I need to add that. Um, these questions will be answered and submitted through Blackboard. Okay, yeah. So the lowest one, I won't, I won't bother because it will only help your grade, but I will drop the lowest reading question assignment also. So if you miss one, no big deal. But if you miss two, three, four, it's going to start impacting your grade. Okay, you must get at least a 90% overall for an A. 89.9% .9 is not an A. No matter where I draw the lines, if I say 89.5 and I round it up to a 90, then there are going to be students that have an 89.4 that are complaining, oh, I didn't get the A, I just need that 0.1 percentage point. So no matter where I draw the lines, I'm always going to have just a few students falling short of the next grade up. Over the course of your academic career, it averages out. Sometimes you barely you know, make it over the threshold for a grade and you get the next grade up, um, and other times you barely miss it. So it averages out over your career, but that's how this course is going to work. You must achieve at least a 90% for an A and 80% for an A, for a B, and so on. Now, again, because it's online, please, please, please keep up. You're going to fall behind. Um, I, it, really, there is no excuse other than a family emergency, you know, major thing that comes up, which happens. Let me know immediately, and maybe we can make arrangements, right? Uh, but please, please keep up. If there's anything that comes up, let me know, okay? And I am happy. I'm actually maybe too happy. I'm weird that way to talk about evolution, but I'm happy to do it. Log on to Zoom office hours, ask me questions, go over things. Uh, say, hey, I saw this cool thing on National Geographic, or I read this article about genetically modified organisms. I'm happy to talk about those. If they're related to the material, it's so much the better. But, you know, as long as it's biology or even science, I'm happy to talk about it during those office hours. The link for the Zoom office hours is here. Um, most of us are very, very familiar with Zoom after the last year and a half. Okay, so that's where it is. I'll be there every Monday through Thursday at 930, but can also make appointments other than that if you need. Um, if you fall into this category and need assistance, this can be a variety of things, let me know. Communicate with me. Uh, we'll do it officially through the Student Accessibility Services Office, but also communicate with me. I'm happy to make the accommodations needed to help you be successful. If this does not apply to you, great, but be aware of it because you never know. You know, you might have an accident, there might be a, um, something that comes up where suddenly you can really make use of this. So it's there and that information is there if and when you need it. All right, let's take a quick look at the calendar. Again, you will be held for these dates. The calendar is here uh, in this uh, folder on the web page. We can bring it up here. Okay, calendar is in PDF format. You can print a hard copy if you'd like, post it above your computer, or just use the digital version. Um, every day of the, of the week, again, since it's the way summer works, you'll have either an exam or an assignment. Now, for each of these units, unit one till exam one, two to exam two, so I have a corresponding daily links folder here uh, on the Blackboard page. So we'll look at that in a little bit. But you are held for all of these dates. You've got reading assignments in this column. Each day, this, the material that we're going to be doing, and then your reading assignments for that day. And then anything that's due is in this column over here. There are reading questions that are due. If you have a reading assignment, you have reading questions due this first day, and they're due on that day. Now, for this first one, because we're just barely getting started, I'm giving you a little bit of a break. These first ones, I'll actually give you one extra day for papers one and two. Again, these are gimmies. Read the papers. These are first two ones are short. Answer the, the questions. They're short answer. Fill in the blank. Uh, not really fill in the blank. Sorry, just write out a very type in a very short answer and submit it. You get full credit for these first ones. I'll give you one extra day, but the rest are due by the end of the day on the day they are listed. So, reading questions for paper three are due Wednesday, June second. 
If you log on on June 3rd, it will not be visible anymore. You will not be able to complete it. So please be aware of these. You can complete them ahead of time. Now, I'm not going to put up the entire course material all at once because I don't think it's helpful for students to rush through a course and the exams are on the day they're going to be on anyway. Um, so I will wait until near the end of each unit before I put up the material for the next unit. However, you can work a day or two ahead if that helps your schedule, right? You know, you've got work all day on Wednesday, you can get a little bit ahead. So work at your own pace, put them up. I, some of the things uh, are still waiting for unit one. I've got to get the quizzes up in the worksheet one, but they'll be up within the first day or so of courses. So, you know, just be aware of that. Pace yourself. Don't cram it all in, but you can get a little bit ahead. Okay, so be aware of the all of these dates, okay? Final exam is all day online on Tuesday, July 6th. Be aware of all those. I will also remind you from time to time with announcements, like for quizzes, there'll be an automatic announcement that's generated once the quizzes are posted. Um, same thing for exams, you'll have a reminder of those. In addition, so we'll shut down the um, calendar here. In addition, you have this second uh, uh, item on the menu here, the daily links folder, which will be of great use to you. In the daily links folder, and again, I haven't made the other units available yet, but they will be shortly before they start. You have a folder for each unit. In each of those folders for the unit, you have every single day of that unit. So the first unit goes from June 1st through June 8th. So we've got seven days, oh, sorry, six days is all right. Some are a little more, a little less. Actually, I think they're all a little less than this first unit. When you click on that folder for each of those days, there is a list of all of the things you need to do by the end of that day. You get a little bit behind some of these things, like you can watch the course orientation video you're watching now, so boom, you've, you've knocked number one off the list. Reading the textbook, again, you don't need to memorize it or go over it in a ton of detail, but skim over it, right? Read the paper. Once you finish the paper, answer and submit that reading question, okay? Then there are videos, and I try to break most of the videos up into short sections, 15 to 20 minutes. Some of them are longer. Um, so these are all on YouTube. Uh, if you've got a video connection, a, an internet connection, you can watch them anywhere, okay? so. The first, pay, first day is a little heavy, uh, maybe heavier than most days, but if, you, if you're, you've got an extra day to finish it if you need to. So I, I put a little bit of delay there. So you click on that, it'll take you to the um, YouTube page for you to watch that video. And again, some of them are short. Um, this one is gonna be, do, do, do. let's see when it pops up here. Skip the ads. Um, 25 minutes long. Okay, that's a, a little bit of a longer one. Many of them are much shorter than that, okay? So, just, you know, that's a nice thing. You can log on every day to the daily links. You can use the calendar, but also use the daily links to keep you on course, right? If you log on every morning and do everything on that list, you're good to go, okay? You can also use the calendar to help you plan, maybe get a little bit ahead, okay? So that's there, that's there for you to use all of the daily links for each day. In addition, I have PowerPoint, um, files for each of these uh, videos. So for unit 1.1.1, .1, there's a PowerPoint video. You, some of them are, I think there's one or two that don't have a PowerPoint, but almost all of the rest do. You can download them if you want to. Some people like to download the PowerPoints and make notes on the PowerPoint. So in unit one, you click on that, you'll see 1.1.1, uh, PowerPoint 1.1.2, each of those subunits, you will have a PowerPoint for there also, okay? So those are organized by unit. The next item on our uh, menu here are SLOs. SLO is an acronym. It stands for Student Learning Outcomes. Each SLO is a Word document with an outline of all of the major points for that unit. And again, they're organized by folder. My, my uh, thing's slow here because um, I'm recording this video and that slows things down a little bit. But in each of those um, folders for each unit. You have a subfolder um, and then you have um, an outline in Word format with all the major topics. Those are a great guideline for you studying as you're getting ready for an exam or going over the material from, from each of the units to see if you uh, got it. If you have any questions on any of those items on those SLOs, come and see me during Zoom office hours. Make an appointment. Ask questions. I'm happy to go over with them. 
All of the reading assignments are in this folder, but they're also linked to in the daily links folder. So you get links to those also, but they're here also if you want to find them. The remaining four folders are, for, well, the, these next three are empty. I'll put the work, first worksheet up, slow, up shortly. It will be there in that folder. The first quiz once it's ready will be there. And then when the first exam appears, it will be in this folder. In addition, in the daily links, there are reminders about where you find all those. It'll say, look in the worksheets folder or in the quizzes folder for that quiz. Okay. The last thing, I'll maybe put some additional things in the supporting material thing, but for now, um, all I have in there is this grade estimator. I always have students say, hey, what grade am I getting? And the answer is, well, I don't know until you've completed all of the material. That, that can change. But if you want to estimate where you are, you can download it. When you click on it, you'll get this thing. Just you know, figure out, well, I've taken two exams. I got an 80 on one and a 70 on the other, so my exam average is 75. Drop your lowest quiz. Oops, sorry, that should be just 75. Um, drop your lowest quiz and figure out... Um, there we go. Drop your lowest quiz and then figure out your average. And so you can put in all your averages and based on those weights, again, drop your lowest for the reading questions, it will tell you where you currently are in the course. So you can do that at any time, download that Excel file and do that. Okay, again, I cannot emphasize enough to keep up with the material. It's gonna come pretty fast. Be aware of that. If you've taken summer courses before, you know what to expect. It's gonna take a fairly good amount of time. Remember. This is a um, three credit hour course, which means on average for every hour you spend in course, you sp should probably be spending at least an hour outside of course. Now, during a regular semester, that would mean three hours in class on average each week and three hours out of class. However, this one is three times as long. So technically, it's nine hours each week in class watching things than nine hours studying. Now I know that's a lot, you know, it's 20 hours almost uh, for one course. And usually it's not quite that bad for most students, but it is a lot and will come very fast for the summer. The advantage of that is it's kind of like ripping off the Band-Aid. You get it done quickly, it's over with, boom, you're done, move on to summer two. But if you fall behind, it's gonna be a bit of an issue. Okay, so please, please be aware of that. Reach out to me if you have any questions or need to go over anything and if you have any emergencies, as soon as possible, I will try to make accommodations, but particularly if there's a delay in you letting me know, sometimes we will not be able to make accommodations for certain uh, events. All right, looking forward to it. Please reach out, talk to me, um, uh, hit me up on Zoom, I guess at least, right? Um, I'm happy to go over anything that you have questions on relating to the course.